In this there video, we are going to look at how to make silver nitrate, known as AgNO3. Silver nitrate was discovered in the 13th century, which is the 1200s, quite a while ago, when nitric acid was discovered. And it makes sense because all you need for silver nitrate is the silver, which has been around for thousands of years, and the NO3, or the nitric acid. The silver nitrate was used to make mirrors for hundreds of years, and not until around 1940 did they start to experiment with aluminum. And today all mirrors are made by spraying a thin layer of aluminum on the back of a piece of glass. The materials for this are silver. I have a half an ounce or 14.17 grams of 99.999% silver and nitric acid 70% so it's concentrated. We need around 18 to 20 milliliters. And in studying up for this, I've not done this before, uh, it was interesting, there's no clear uh, instructions on how much of the nitric acid to add. You just need to add enough until your silver completely dissolves. For our method, we need just a couple of beakers and a heat source. We'll start by putting our silver nugget, our 99.999% silver nugget in here, and then we'll add our 70% nitric acid. And as I was saying, I'm going to start with around here. I may have to add a little bit more to get the silver to completely dissolve. At room temperature, this does start to work, but if you add some heat, it goes much much quicker. Nitrogen dioxide will be formed, the browned gas, which is rather toxic, so you need to do this under a fume hood or outdoors. Once your silver has completely dissolved, you want to let this cool and crystals will form a silver nitrate automatically. Very simple. When that's done, you really need to wait out the evaporation of the rest of the liquid in here, a solution, and then break up your silver nitrate crystals. These are sensitive to light to some degree, so you want to protect, once you have the crystals, you want to protect them from light as much as you can. They will also stain your hands black, so be careful about that and wear gloves. Hey, I'm looking forward to doing this. Let's go ahead and start. I placed my 100 milliliter beaker on top of the heat source there, and I have here my silver, which is, if you can read this, half an ounce, which is 14.17 grams and uh, it's stamped on the other side with the company that made it and you know when you have a pure piece of silver like this sometimes the last thing you want to do is do chemistry with it but that's what we're doing so I'm going to place this in here like so I've got the fume hood on and I'm going to add the nitric acid now and I just want to add enough to cover it so I wasn't sure how much that would be I figured it'd be between 15 and 20 milliliters Not quite. You can see that it's starting to react a little bit more. The silver is already tarnishing. It's not that bright, shiny color anymore. And uh, the reaction's going, but we need some additional heat, and that's why it's on a hot plate. So I'm going to turn that up here and uh, be back when this starts to react a little bit more. A couple of things while it's heating up, uh, you have to do this under a fume hood or outdoors because the nitrogen dioxide, that brown gas is going to be formed. And I realize as I say that, that nitrogen dioxide has the word dye in it. So yeah, take that for real. It's serious stuff. And the second thing is that um, often you'll see the uh, silver suspended on aluminum wire because aluminum is not affected by concentrated nitric acid. But you don't need that. I don't have it actually. And I'm going to overcome that um, by stirring this occasionally. The aluminum wire, by suspending the silver, keeps it off the bottom so that all areas are affected. But stirring it will also do the same thing. You can just see the early signs of the nitrogen dioxide gas being formed here. I've got a glass stir rod I was talking about, so I'll be mixing this around a bit from time to time. It's a bit too early now, but uh, just showing you what I plan on doing. The reaction is just taken off, and you can hear the bubbling. The silver is bubbling as it's getting dissolved. Lots of the nitrogen dioxide gas going right up the fume hood. The reaction does seem to be dying down just a little bit. I'm trying to find that chunk of silver. Oh, there it is. Now there's still 
would say about half of it left, so I may need to add some more nitric acid to this to completely dissolve it. I'm going to add about another four milliliters of uh, concentrated nitric acid here just because there's some silver left there. We'll get this reaction going again until all that silver is gone. There we go. The reaction continues and everything has dissolved again. It's been a good 20 minutes since I started this, maybe 25 minutes, and uh, just it's a slow reaction. The silver has come to the front. You can see how much is left there, and I may have to still add some nitric acid. Adding another probably four milliliters of nitric acid right now. Watch for the uh, crystals to form in the front. I'll try to do it. Look at that. There's enough silver to dissolve because this is cold. It's immediately bringing whatever crystals of silver nitrate there are out of solution. Well, the silver piece has gotten small enough. You can see it bouncing around in there. I expect this will be done in the next probably 10, 15 minutes or so. Well, you can see the silver motor boating around the edge here and through the middle. Very little left. The silver is completely gone. The reaction stopped. I've turned off the heat and we're going to wait till it cools down. The total time for the reaction was about a half hour. And you can see as this is cooling down, there are crystals already forming, and yet it's still pretty darn hot. It's about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see from the top too easily. So as the nitrogen dioxide has essentially stopped, I'm going to go ahead and put this into my fridge freezer. This has cooled down completely, and it is one solid chunk of silver nitrate crystals in there. So I'm going to chip these out and uh, probably put them over filter paper and then wash it with cold acetone. As this glass is completely clean here, I'm gonna just break them up. Hopefully it's not as hard as it would seem at first. Took a minute to chop those up finely so when they're washed, they will, of course, get covered as much as possible. This is just a sheet of aluminum. I made this some time ago for this kind of weird purpose here. So I'm going to put them all up on here. And then I'm going to take and turn it and put them in here. While I was chilling down the uh, silver nitrate crystals, I was also chilling down this acetone. So I'm just going to squirt it in there and get rid of any excess nitric acid and anything else that might be left sitting around here. The almost dry silver nitrate product. This is still wet silver nitrate, but it's drying pretty quickly. Acetone evaporates quite fast. And I'll be putting this, once it's completely dry, into a dark bottle and keep it safe. Final yield of the silver nitrate, 23.27 grams. As I said, I'll be using this in further experiments. Thanks for watching.